We all have trauma and suffering in our lives, but how do we become stronger? How do we transform suffering into a superpower that gives us advantages in life? I want to share four traumatic experiences in my life that made me stronger, and maybe that will shed light uh, onto how do we become stronger. Okay, oppression and violence, displacement, divorce, and poverty. Those are the four experiences that I've had that were shaping experiences. Um, the oppression and violence story is from when I was five years old. We lived in Chile at the time. There was a military coup and massive social unrest uh, happened right after mass arrests. Tens of thousands of people were um, put in concentration camps, tortured, killed. My father was one of them. Actually, my first memory, my childhood memory that I can recall was standing outside of a concentration camp with my mom holding her hand and she was trying to talk to the soldier and trying to pass food so the soldier can pass it to my dad, which he never did. We spent some time in a refugee camp, ended up uh, getting political asylum in Germany. That was a very traumatic experience. It shaped who I am in many ways. The second was sort of this this life of displacement transition. Um, as a kid, I, we went to three different countries by the age I four different countries, three different continents by age seven, we ended up in Africa. So imagine this young mind trying to adjust to a new culture, new language, new people, new realities. And it was very traumatic um, because I was trying to find a place how I fit in and how to interact with people. And then sort of my context kept uh, ch changing all the time. All right. The third one was divorce. My parents got divorced when I was 14. And I think at the time, many parents that I knew of my friends were getting divorces as well. It was this wave of divorces. And it really traumatized me, shook me, and sort of shaped in me this, this sense of, you know, love doesn't work, marriage doesn't work, things fall apart. Um, and for the longest time, I, I dis couldn't make sense of it, right? I couldn't find it in myself to believe in love, in marriage, and that affected the way uh, I treated romantic relationships. Okay, so the fourth one was poverty. We experienced quite a bit of it growing up, as you can imagine, being in Latin America, being in Africa, we had some food rations there, shortages in, in some areas. We ended up in the Soviet Union in those years where things were pretty grim and gray. We ended up in a living in a, this one bedroom apartment with my mom, my my mom and my sister, and we. My bedroom was in the uh, in the kitchen. Actually, I had a pull out chair, uh, not even a pull out couch or sofa. It was just a pull out chair, and that was my bed. Um, so we experienced a lot of those material limitations growing up, and that shaped us in many ways. So, how do we make sense of all of that? Dr. Sonia Lubomirsky studies how people respond to trauma, and she delineates the difference between resilience, which is basically if you have a baseline and you have something bad that happens to you, you dip and then you come back, you bounce back to the previous level of happiness, satisfaction, and what she calls post-traumatic growth, which is your baseline is this, something happens, you go down, and then you not only come back to your previous levels of happiness, but you actually go up and be, you become stronger, more satisfied, more happy, more able to succeed. Nassim Taleb, who is an author, he actually notes the same thing, and he calls that anti-fragility. It's a great term, anti-fragility. So what I want to do is share with you the five practices that have helped me with post-traumatic growth. Okay, the first one, and I use this all the time, is heightened appreciation. It's this habit, this awareness to mark the good in your life, right? A better economic circumstance, geographic, family, relational, health, compared to a low point that you've experienced in the past. That helps you savor moments a little bit more, right? You can go for a walk and go, this is, I live in this amazing neighborhood. You can look at a friend and realize this person has done so much for you and loves you and appreciates you and helps you grow. You can express it to other people, right? Express it at your workplace. Express it to employees, to your boss, to your colleagues. 
this is heightened appreciation. If you do that, if you develop that habit or this lens that you put, um, it really changes things. And it has to do with trauma because you can compare it to something else. Does that make sense? Uh, on Sunday at church, we practice the Eucharist. The Eucharist, it's translated as thanksgiving. It's heightened appreciation. It's a, a zoom out perspective of what Jesus did for you when he died on the cross. So as Christians, every Sunday we have a, a, an opportunity to actually practice this. The second practice is nurturing deeper relationships. This is not rocket science. We only thrive, we're happier, we're better if we invest in relationships. And I'm talking about very, very intentional nurturing and a desire, just a, 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 a aspiration to go deeper with people. To not just talk about the weather or about the economy or about politics, but to go deeper and share vulnerable things with people. And I'm talking about a daily practice of that. So finding ways to connect at a deeper, more meaningful level with people, friends, co-workers, families, spouses, your children, if they're out of the house especially, it's, it's an extra effort. Um, that just changes everything, right? In some, there are studies that have been made that basically require between three and six hours of daily meaningful relational connections, which seems very overwhelming to some people, but it's actually quite possible if you put your mind to it. Um, the third practice is this practice of personal strength, of understanding that if you survived this, it means you have the ability to thrive. It's this developing and nurturing of self-belief, reliance, optimism, and there's all kinds of different ways to do it, but my point is pursuing that makes a big difference. And the last one, the last practice is spiritual growth. And the reason for that is because people who have experienced life-changing traumatic, traumatic experiences, big things like I described to you in the beginning of this video, you can sort of shrink and stay paralyzed by this, or you can zoom out and try to get perspective and seek perspective and seek understanding on why bad things happen to good people, you know, on a very basic level. It gives you this, this hunger for meaning. And when you have hunger for meaning, you seek meaning. And when you seek meaning, you gain meaning and you become more wise. You have perspective. It, it gives you this incredible boost of maturity if you allow it to actually work through your life in a way that is anti-fragile. So how do these practices help me process and become anti-fragile in the context of the four traumatic experiences that I told you about? Uh, I'm gonna give you just the highlights to give you a taste of it. So the military coup in Chile really taught me about danger, about evil, but also taught me about survival, about taking risks, about not being afraid. So I think it instilled in me this, this adventurous, bold, spirit that I get to enjoy and implement in other areas of my life. Displacement, sort of going from country to country, from language to language, to, from culture to culture, and trying to fit in as a little kid that was sort of paralyzing in the beginning, also gave me the ability to relate to people uh, at a heightened level. I learned four languages by age nine, and I sort of, I can read people, I can understand, I love people, so it gives me a lot of empathy. These are all anti-fragile capabilities that have helped me tremendously in life. Uh, the divorce of my parents, which was super painful at the time as a kid and, and really shaped me and sort of wrecked my rom romantic life for a long time, eventually turned into this, oh, this passion, this zeal to be the best husband and the best father ever. And I basically decided something clicked and I decided I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to take this weakness, the suffering and make it a superpower. And I won't rest and won't settle for anything less than excellence. And I'm telling you, I've had an amazing life with my wife Deb. We're in love. Our kids love and respect us. We have this amazing family. And I really credit the trauma in the beginning to give me the strength and the zeal and the drive to figure it out and fix it. 
The last one is poverty. In poverty, it's uh, that sort of really stuck with me for a while because it gives you this overarching sense of lack, of scarcity. And also it can cause in you a drive to escape poverty, a drive to to transcend limiting factors. And I think I credit that trauma and the anti-fragile things that it created in me with my ability to become an entrepreneur and to build new things and to continue experimenting and thriving and, and making that a priority in my life. Um, so you can see how suffering can become a superpower and how those practices developed daily um, can, can just enrich us in ways that, that we couldn't even imagine and certainly can't imagine that when we're in the midst of the suffering. So for all of you who are now maybe in the pit of trauma or suffering, I want to encourage you with these words. Sometimes the suffering is caused by us, it's self-inflicted. Some of it, some of it sometimes has nothing to do with us. But either way, this suffering, this trauma can change you and transform you to serve others in this world. It can be actually the beginning of a new thriving, of a new superpower that comes into your life and takes you from a baseline to a much higher plane and you become anti-fragile. So may you become anti-fragile. May you, may you not give up. May you thrive as a human being, not only in spite of the trauma and suffering, but sometimes because of it. This episode of Headspace is brought to you by Exponential Life, which is a coaching program that I offer that uses some of these techniques in a very structured, focused way to help people transition and leave anxiety, burnout, and unhappiness and embrace a redesigned lifestyle that leads to thriving, to superpowers, and to this exponential state of being, a high performance state of being that results in a lot of success downstream. If this is you, if this is your need, please check out the website.